All right, so now we're going to look at creating a heat map or kernel density surface from a set of input points. So this is used generally if you want to try to estimate the density or of a certain feature or occurrence, like for example, the density of like an invasive species or like the spread of a disease or the density of, I don't know, like crimes or something. So what I have here as an example is uh, point data representing tornado occurrences across the country. So what I'd like to do is create a heat map that shows the density of, of tornadoes uh, from this point layer. Okay, so there's a couple different options within QGIS. So there's kernel density options under Saga and under Grass. What we're going to look at is the heat map or kernel density estimation function underneath the, the interpolation sub toolbox. So we'll open that up. Um, so our input here is going to be our tornadoes. The search radius is how far out it's going to look to like accumulate or um, predict the the um, the density. So generally, the larger you make this number, the more generalized or smooth the pattern is going to be. Um, it's kind of hard to make to decide. Generally, you just play around with it. Uh, I'm going to use a distance of 50 kilometers. So we'll switch this unit to kilometers there. And then the pixel size, we're going to switch that to um, the whole country. This is pretty large. We're going to set that to 10,000. Well, let's, let's do 1,000. That seems reasonable, number rows and columns. Um, so, and then also you could get the value from a field, so the search rates from a field in the table. Um, you can also apply a weight. So for example, in this case, we could weight it against like the F scale score, but we're not going to do that. And then this is the function used to fit the, the or build the, the kernel or estimate the density. We'll just leave that at quadratic. Um, this decay ratio only applies to triangular kernels, which we're not using. And then you have an option of spinning out raw values or, or scaled values. We'll just leave it set to raw. Okay, so that should allow us to generate this surface. So I'm going to hit run and close. Okay, so there we go. There's our surface. Note that it didn't actually spit out values in locations where there's effectively a zero density. Um, if you really, really wanted that, you could um, like recode that to, to zero or something. Um, so this doesn't look very uh, clean. Um, so let's play around with the symbology a bit to see if we can make it look a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to go to properties. And we're going to go to source. And right now it's a single band grayscale. Um, let's try to assign a collar to it. So we'll do single band pseudo collar. And we should be able to create a collar ramp. Um, let's see what our ramp options are. I mean, we're talking about tornadoes, maybe like a red ramp would be good. And you could, we'll just use it, use a continuous scale. I think that makes sense. And we'll hit apply and okay. So that looks a little bit better. I think we could improve it by um, using a uh, transparency. So we're going to set the transparency a bit and move it over here so we can see it. And let's turn the point layer off because that's kind of uh, um, interacting with it a little too much. Turn this back up a little. I think that looks a little bit better. So we can see where we've got a high density of tornado occurrence based on, based on that pattern. So again, there's other ways to do this in QGIS. Um, this is just one example uh, that's native to QGIS.